Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to Creating Stylish WordPress Design Patterns with Gutenberg from your rough visuals. So in the last video we did a two column text left gallery on the right. So what we're going to do is tackle the next one which is a fairly simple single column heading text and then a gallery of four images. So the first thing I want to do is to just take a screenshot of that so that I can use my Pixel Pro to overlay in my browser which I'll get my image first. So I first of all want to change the aspect ratio of this image to make it 1280 wide. So this just ensures that it fits my recording screen. Just pop back to my installation of WordPress and make sure that my Pixel Pro is open. And this gives me this dialog box. If you don't know what this is, this is basically an extension for overlaying images um, and it will help us to design our patterns. I put it in the previous video, so go and check my previous video out. So I'm just gonna drag my image in to here. As you can see, it's put my image directly over top in my, in my browser. So I'm gonna unlock it and move it, just center it, just to make it easier to work with. So once that's in the middle, I'm just gonna change the parameters just to make it more visible. So I'm just gonna study this. So the first thing I can see, I've got uh, like a container. Um, that's probably gonna be a group. And then I've got a heading, some paragraph text and some images. So I can start building this out in my page. I'm just gonna knock that back to about 10%. Again, just so it's not so intrusive and I can design over the top of it. So I can just about see it there in the background. So the first thing I need to do here is to add, add in a group block. So with that added in, I'm gonna make it a full width and I wanna change the setting of that to make it more visible to, to give it a background color. So that background color, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more pastel colored. And then looking at my visual, if I just pop back, make that 100% again, I can see immediately that I've got a bit of space at the top and the bottom. So that's gonna be padding. So I need to go back to my block and the styles and then go to my padding and just, I'm gonna crank it right up. Now I need to add in some text. In fact, what I'm going to do, if I just move this out of the way, I'm going to copy this whole block of text up here. I'm going to paste it directly in that. And then I need a few images. So up to my block inserter, over to my media, and then Openverse. So Openverse is a whole mega library of images provided by WordPress. And I'm going to look for some C views. And I'm just going to pop in those first four images and just by clicking them, they'll dump them into the page. So I'm gonna to go to my list view and I'm going to insert after here, add mm -hmm. after, and I wanna make that one a gallery. So that block there is a gallery, but it's an empty gallery at the moment. So all I need to do is to just shift select my images and then just drag them into the gallery and that will dump them in there. Already I can see that there's three columns. So rather than go to my list view, which I could do to go to the gallery to change the settings there, I'm actually gonna use my breadcrumb down here because I find it easier. It's less intrusive if, if I use the list view. So if I select my gallery and go over to my settings and then change that to four column, now we've got all the content for our, our section block. So just lining up my overlay rough visual, which is you can just see at the bottom or behind there, I just want to line up my the top of my group with that, the top of the rough visual, just and start working down from the top to the bottom. So immediately I can see that the text needs to be centered, and the paragraph text needs to be centered as well. And then the images haven't quite got the right width, it needs to be a little wider. But first of all, I'm going to just take those captions off so I can see what I'm doing. So with the captions off, again, immediately I can see that the images should be square. So again, I'm gonna select these images, go to my settings, and change the aspect ratio to one to one, which will make the images square. Now it only does it on that first one, well that's the only one I've done for the moment. I just wanna ensure that they're all square, just so it doesn't cause me any problems down the road. And so they're all square. So if I clear some space, so again, like I mentioned, I've, I've got a narrow width here, so I need to make the, the whole 
gallery set wider. So if I go to my gallery alignment, I can see it's set to 620. So if I change it to a wide of 1000, that actually makes it too wide. So I need to be somewhere in between. So as we've I've shown you before, we just need to go to our group and set a content width on the group. So if I set the group to full width, and then I go to the settings for my group, and I set that, I'm gonna set that to about 850. Then look at my visual again, or line it up with my visual. Now I can see straight away that the text is, because the measure's changed, it's actually pushed the text to two lines. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shift return, and what that'll do is just put a soft return in there. If I put in a hard return, what that would do is actually create another block, and then you've got an obvious space. I don't want to do that. I want to keep it in the same block, so I'm just going to shift return, and that'll put a soft return in there. Actually, I'm not going to do it on that word. I'm going to do it there. So now I can see that I'm lining everything up again. I can see that everything's sort of looking okay, but I think probably the text needs to be, or the heading and the paragraph text need to be closer together. So I know from experience that this will be coming from the margin, but we'll go through the process of checking. So probably initially I'd check the heading. I'll go to my settings and I want to check my dimensions and just look at my padding and margin. Just make sure that's all zeroed out. Now it's not coming from this heading. It's actually coming from the paragraph text. So again, do the same thing with your paragraph text. You go to dimensions, enable the padding and, and margins, check the padding. Now, if you mouse over these icons, they'll actually show you what's going on. By increasing it by one, you can see I've got a visual representation of one unit. Now, it is coming from my margin. So again, if you mouse over the, the kind of slider toggle, you can see that it's coming from the top. So I'm just going to zero them all out. And actually, that's probably too close now to the heading. So I just want to give that one, maybe two. And then I'm looking at the sort of the visual in the background and then matching up with the with the rough sketch in the in the overlay so that's kind of looking okay so if i just get that out of the way now we're almost there but i can see from the the visual underneath or the overlay that there's a little bit more of a gap between each image so we can address that by we'd assume we could just go to the gallery and adjust what we've done before in the past is change our block spacing so we select our gallery, go up to settings, and then go to the styles, and we don't have any. Now, I think I've explained this in previous videos, but when developers develop these blocks, they can actually take settings away or include them. Now, I can only assume that this is being done this way because a, a gallery block is actually calculated depending on the, the amount of columns that you set. Um, and it does it mathematically in CSS. So it'll take like four, divide it by four, which is 25. So there's 25% and then there'll be a gap that's figured out to, uh, or a calculation that's figured out to, to get the correct gap. So we need to think about a different way of lining these images up and then taking control of the gap space. So in order to do that, what I need to do is to insert what's called um, a row. So if I add a row, um, a row is basically like a containing block, so the same as a, a group, but it just lines everything up in a row. And the icon sort of says it all. Now the opposite to a row is a stack, which it does what it says on the tin, it stacks everything top to bottom. And the icon gives it away really. So a row goes left to right and a stack goes top to bottom. So I want to line my images up in a row. So all I need to do is to go to my list view and then just take all of my images and put them in my row block. So I'm just gonna drag them in there. If you watch the line, you can see that if I dump it there, it will actually put the image between the row and the gallery. I actually wanna put it in, in the row. So if I just move it up slightly, you'll see the line gets smaller and that'll dump it inside. So I wanna do the same for the other images. And you can start to see they're all sort of lining up horizontally. And that's, that's what a row does. So I don't need my gallery anymore, so I can get rid of that. And now I should be able to take control of my row, just ensuring that I've got my row selected in my breadcrumb down the bottom here. Go to my settings, styles, and then I've now got access to my block spacing. 
So I want to increase that a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the sketch below and I'm looking at that gap there and I'm trying to match it between my images. So that's probably about right. Maybe one more. No, that's too big. So put that at six, make some room. Now if we work again from the top to the bottom, so I'm just lining up the sketch with the top of my group block, working down. Now I can see there's a bit of more space from between the paragraph text and the image so I'm just going to add in some padding there not padding padding's like when you put a coat on you've got padding on the inside so padding is like space on the inside and margin pushes elements away so I need to add margin to the bottom of that to push the image images away so if I go to my margins and then I want to individually select them so I want to go to my bottom margin and just increase that by maybe to actually doesn't take any effect until I actually hit the images so I need to push it a little bit further so five is about right so if I just clear that up and that pattern is looking pretty bang on except we seem to have a little bit more space at the bottom or we need some more space just to even things up so what I need to do there is to go to my group and then again go to my dimensions for the group and look at the padding but not top and bottom I want to look at the bottom padding. So I just want to push that away one, and that is lined up perfectly. So that's my pattern built, but I don't want to just leave it there. What I want to do is show you how you can just be a little bit different with these images. Um, and I'm going to convert all of these to a what's known as a cover block. And a cover block is basically um, an image, and then you can overlay text or insert, or what's known as inner blocks in, inside that cover block. So they're really useful, but it's changed, pushed all the sort of settings out here, and that's because it's giving me a prompt to add text or add a block. If I just hit backspace there, that will take that out. This um, right title is not going to appear in the front end, it's just a prompt. So I'm just going to carry on and convert all these to covers. Now we've got a height issue. So what I want to do on all of these cover blocks is, and just ensure if you click inside, that's going to put you in a paragraph block. So you actually want to select the cover. So by clicking on the background of that cover block, that ensures that you've got the cover selected. So I want to shift click all of these covers and I want to give it a set height. So if I go to my styles, I think my set height is down here somewhere. Yeah, so I've got minimum height. What I'm going to do is put that to 200. And that'll just make everything 200 pixels deep. And I also want to make the images more visible. So there is a an overlay, and it's set to 50%. But I want the overlay to be zero. And that what that will do is it will bring the images up to 100%. So now if I click off, I can see that all my images are, are visible now. So from here, what I want to do is to just uh, Give these all of these covers a round corner but I'm not just going to give it a radius overall if you unlink it it gives you individual radiuses so I can go say top left this is top right bottom left bottom right I'm gonna give the top left 50 pixel radius and then I want to select the other one and do exactly the same thing but not on the top left I want to do it on the bottom right and then this one I'm going to do top right, unlink it, 50%, 50 pixels, and then this one I want to do on the bottom, bottom left. So I want to do that. And now if I save that and then just pop to the front end, I'll show you the obvious mistake. First of all, I'll just get rid of that overlay. So I've saved that and I want to go and view it in the front end. We scroll down now we can see an obvious mistake there the reason this is happening is because we haven't placed anything inside the cover block if we place something inside it it will then go to the width it'll fit the width of the whatever's inside it so if you put text in there it will just span the width um, I don't want that because I'm not going to put any text in there so what I need to do for all of these blocks is to set the content to be not not fit but I want it to fill so I want the whole block to fill the space it's in so I want to do that on all of them 
And if I just do the first two and then save that, and then I'll show you in the front end just to demonstrate what happens. But the first two will be take up all the space, and then it will just leave space for the whatever's left for the other ones because they're set to fit. Now you can be creative like that if you want to. I mean, this could be the same image perhaps, and you can change the crop of them. Um, this is literally just to illustrate how you can get creative with all these. I want to actually make them the same width, so I'm going to go back and just set these to fit as well. Or fill, sorry. But then this time, what I want to do is take the image out of this one and just give it a solid colour. So you can come down to the media and just clear the media out of that and then give it a colour background, which is actually the overlay. But because the overlay is set to zero, we won't see anything. So if I put a big blue, we don't see anything because the overlay is set to zero. So if we up that to 100%, we now get our colour back. So if I update that, and then I can take a view at the front end, and we can see that we've got some nice images, a bit abstract with colour, and maybe you just want to do all colour. But that basically is our pattern built. So I can go ahead go to my list view, select my group, create pattern. I'm going to unsync it and we call it one column plus four times gallery row. So create that and that's your pattern created and that could be used anywhere in your site. So if you like what you see, please do give this video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, and if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.